So in this video, we're gonna be going like step by step. So like, why am I talking about this? Um, and then going into the skills needed, and we're just gonna talk through each of these skills, and hopefully you'll get like a really big, you know, understanding of like kind of what these things are and why I'm talking about them. I spent like two hours just researching how do you become an AI engineer because they make like a lot of money and it also feels like it's like an underserved like market because not a lot of software engineers like think that they can move into it. Like I used to think that it was because like you need to, you need, you need to be an ML, you need to go to grad school, you need to know stats. But as of today, 2025, there's a lot of companies that just say like, hey man, can you use LLMs? Like kinda, right? And so um, I want to put this together and show this and I were to look at like AI LLMs, I'm gonna see like just so many like founding engineer for this AI startup. Like there, one, there was so much money into AI stuff. Two, they like they just want LLMs like 160, 235. Again, we're, we're looking at this live. I don't know. I don't know what this is even gonna be, but four years experience, use React. This one's not really AI. Why does it say AI? It's so weird. Am I missing it? I don't see the AI stuff on here. Okay. Um, normally they'll say like use LLMs and stuff like that, but Hold on, hold on. What's this one? Numerical, freed, AI systems, AI backend, Mintlify. Let's go ahead and take a look. Um, RAG pipelines, data ingestion, prompt engineering, evals, like passion, experience in doing this stuff. One year of experience. They just want someone with one year who has actually done this before. That is so insane. And okay, the pay is probably not gonna be a lot, but like for the people who are jobless, man, I mean, that's kind of worth free Waymos in the Bay Area. And yeah, like th that's just, this is just what I'm seeing. And uh, now let's go through the blocks. So the first skill is RAG systems. And so um, this is probably like, you know, you're just thinking, okay, well, it's like some keyword or whatever. Essentially, this is what allows LLMs to gain like massive, massive context windows. So one thing that you may have uh, noticed is that like, if you try to put an entire book in ChatGPT, or if you try to like copy page a document that's too long into ChatGPT, well, it doesn't work. Now that said, there's still LLMs that are actually capable of doing that. And that's through rags. Um, and this is something you could be a complete specialist in by just doing this. It's essentially, it's a database. Like this is, um, it's rotated to date vector databases. It's, a, it feels like it's like you're learning about being like a SQL person, like all over again, but you're also learning how do you like string the data or whatever, like together. But, um, Again, not super complicated. It's just like, you know, you're creating like a database. So you'd be using um, Pinecone or Chroma and you would be building out kind of like knowledge bases um, and then allowing you performing the chunking um, where people can like, you know, query it and all that. But like, again, if you wanted to kind of dig deep, I would say this is like pretty big. And actually hold on one second here. Let's look, pull up the roadmap SH. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and link this at the bottom um, of, in the description because again, I think this is really useful and I like it, but like, this is what I'm talking about here, right? Which is like, okay, what's an AI engineer? What's AI versus ML? What's your training inference vector database? Like if you learn this stuff, if you put this stuff in your resume and in the interview, you can talk about projects that you built this stuff in. I have a hard time believing that the person isn't going to want to hire you. And there are so many conferences. There's so many just startups. Like if you were to just show up to tech, disrupt in San Francisco. It's coming in October or if you show up to Afrotech or whatever. Yeah, I think that's just like an easy, easy dub because not a lot of software engineers are doing this. And so anyways, but if you do want to like go into this, like, again, this is like the roadmap and I, I like it. So like this is RAG. We go into vector databases, RAG, what's chunking, you know, what's embedding. And he, it even has explanations when you click on it, like super general, he even has articles, which I don't know. I mean, I haven't ready to read them, but yeah, that's that. So then we have prompt engineering. And honestly, again, I can make videos on each of these, maybe in the future, I'm going to make videos on each of these, but prompt engineering is like the, it feels like it's the famous one. It feels like two years ago, people were like, oh my God, it's going to be prompt engineering is the future. Um, and there's going to be jobs where you got to prompt it, right? Which is true. You do need to prompt it, right? And which is like, how are you talking to the LLM? You cannot talk to it in English. It is a machine. It is code. And so the question is going to be, okay, like how can we get this to do what we want it to do and also not make mistakes and also not hallucinate. Like you can actually prompt GPT in a way that will make it hallucinate more. And it typically, I think it happens when you're like forcing facts, like you're like, give me this fact. And like, it's like, okay, man, I mean, I don't, I don't know what the fact is, but I'll, I'll give you a fact, even if it's wrong, even if it's, you know, not accurate. And so that's like a big thing. Um, also, like if you say like become an expert in that drastically changes the results of what you're going to be seeing. And so 
prompt engineering, super important, which is why it's on these like job postings. They want someone who can do that. Do you know the differences between the models? So do you know the differences between Claude? Do you know the difference between OpenAIs, Grok, DeepSeek? Have you like tried them out? Have you played with them? Um, that's going to be like experience is going to be nice to have because not a lot of people know. It's just like, oh, well, they're all the same, but like they're actually not. Um, in my experience, Claude is really, really good at using code, like just developing code. Like I love it. I, I've, I've used open AIs and I use Claude's and Claude's was way better. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I have not used Grok. I have not used DeepSeek. So again, I'm still here learning. I don't know, but those are just kind of my things. I'm sure there are differences between them. And um, I am playing around with uh, Theo's T3.chat. Playing around a little bit with it, but yeah. evaluating LLM. So like when a new LLM comes out, how do you know what's good? Can you evaluate? Do you know how to run evaluations and things like that? Like, again, I think that's like going to be a useful skill. Okay. Um, other thing here too is agents and then workflows. So these are like, these are the massive, massive money makers. Actually, if you nail these skills and you don't have a job and you're like, like if you're just not working like, and you want a job, if you do these two things, this is like a massive, massive need. There are a ton of businesses. There are a ton of people who really need someone who can do these. So what are, what are these? Um, one workflow is like, you can create like just a simple flow. Like, let's say I need to send a text message every morning at 8 AM. Well, I just auto do that, right? Like I build a server, send text message, hits API. Okay. So hits Twilio's API. Okay, cool. It's so a text message going to say, Oh, let me put that in the chat GPT. And then it sends it right. So you can have it to where you can create like these flows, um, like that, that sequence. They're very, very simple. It's like one tool, one command, whatever, but you can use this for content creation too. I have a video where I show how I did this for content creation, how I coded it. Um, again, it's like Claude. I think it was like Claude. I used Claude to make content creation or like make YouTube shorts or something. Um, but that was an example of me building out a workflow and it worked. And that's what, this is why I post so many YouTube shorts because just because of that, like that tool. I mean, related to it, those, those workflows are massive. Okay. Now for agents, this is going to be like the idea that you can have something that can kind of, it's in the environment. So it's not just one flow tool, but it's in the environment and it can actually react to things. So if we're talking about a, a texting, like let's talk about the text messages. It's not just a good morning text every day, or it's not just like, here's this text message. It is, I'm going to be your client support ticket and I'm going to start like escalating tickets and I'm going to be able to book travel for you. So when you say, I want a plane ticket to Guatemala, cause you like Guatemala. Well, now you can tell the chat bot and it will actually like, that's the agent, right? It's, it's, um, it's able to use multiple tools. I would say is like a thing. Um, it's able to like react to just data. Like it's not like a straightforward, like the data that's given gets more vast, I would say. And, um, and it's able to react based off feedback. Um, and overall it's just more chaotic. So this is like the scary thing because LLMs have this really weird thing where they can hallucinate where they are in one mode, they are 99 IQ, 99 IQ. That's not high. There are 199 AQ, super gym bros, um, super gods, whatever. They know everything. And then in the whiff of like two seconds, they are the dumbest things that you could ever imagine. And if you've ever argued with an LLM, if you've ever been sitting there, why aren't you working? That's why. And so the agents are a little bit particularly like, like they sound nice, but they have this chaotic thing where they shift between being really smart and then completely letting you down uh, more so than, I don't know, I was trying to think of a joke there, but so um, I think having skills in both of these are going to be good. And these are the biggest, biggest money makers. I don't know how to describe this, but like the idea that like you can just like create videos infinitely, like for free, just using like chat GPT and stuff like that is very, very beneficial because this stuff just makes businesses money. And if you don't have to parse a document, you don't even have to read your emails anymore because you have a workflow that can do it for you. Maybe it's a, a specific email, maybe it's something, I don't know. But like, again, um, this is a video too, like a topic that I could talk about more. I'm, I'm talking like more here, uh, or I'm talking very fast too, because I do want to sleep and it's late, but I do, I'm hoping that you guys just understand that like these things, two things are very important. And it's the reason why I keep talking about them. And it's the reason why, like, you'll see if I, if we go back to these pages, like there are just so many people who are like, can you use agents? Like agentic flows, that is like, so agentic flow, it's combining workflow and like agent, but like the real big thing is the agents because these are the money makers. And if you can take out the chaos, if your skills can like t let you decrease the chaos, that is so amazing. And then it's worth a ton of money. Let's go here to MCP. So this is like a new protocol where you can actually enable agents because they can actually just build off of tools. And when I say tool, I mean stuff like, uh, like they can click a button on your screen, they can run a command, they can run code, um, but you can just have it auto 
to do it. So that was, yeah, so that's something. Um, and then we've got fine tuning. So that is the idea that like you can take the LLM and kind of customize the output. So if you wanted to write in your style or if you wanted to write in a certain way or say things in a certain way and like be funny or like be super depressing, you can fine tune it, change it a little bit. You're not tuning like the entire thing. You're not building it from scratch. You'll be customizing your own thing, which is, you know, again, skill in itself if you want to. But um, the fine tuning is nice because it's it's a it's a little bonus tweak you can do. Um, and then just basic system design. So this is why like I tie this with the workflows, which is like if you can design a high level system, and we're not talking about like I have a I have another video, it's one hour long where I'm like talking about like here's how you scale databases and like here's how you um, implement like caching and like all these algorithms. But like no, we're just talking about just very high level. You take data from here, you put data here, you store into a database. And so anyways, these are like the, these are like the skills. Um, I would say like, if you want to become an AI engineer, like, I mean, I would be doing this and I'm kind of am doing it cause I'm telling you about it. But, um, it's like, that's opens the door. Like imagine I want to talk and interview at one of these companies. Well, what do you think they're going to say? Like, oh, well, like, like, what do you think they're going to say when I say I have a video talking about it for 20 minutes, 10 minutes, whatever, um, or hours just talking about this kind of stuff. Like uh, LLMs and rags and like implementing it and all these AI automation stuff. So yeah, I mean, again, there's just tons and tons of jobs here. They, they really, really do want people, but a lot of software engineers don't want to learn it. Um, like, so like they'll use it, but like a lot of software engineers actually just don't, they don't care about this stuff. Like I very rarely, rarely, rarely talk to a software engineer who's like, yes, I want to do AI. I want to learn this stuff. I want to build projects with this stuff. Most software engineers are like, yeah, well, who cares? Like, yeah, chat GPT wrapper. I, I hear that a lot. I hear software engineers say chat GPT wrapper. Why? Like, why does it even matter? So I did that. But if you can get over that, um, if you can kind of dip your toes in, it's not too hard. We're not, again, we're not going to grad school and like learning ML stuff for two years and then getting a PhD. Nah, we're just like, just doing this. And then you're just going to be better than the other software engineers. And like, I would expect this to maybe take you like, maybe like a month, like 30 days to actually like learn. And then you suddenly you're becoming like, oh my God, you're so smart. How'd you do that? So yeah, that's it for this video. Um, hopefully this is helpful. Again, I, I do want to make this longer. Maybe again, I, I would love to talk about this for like an hour, but I, I suddenly I do, don't have the time in the day um, while I'm working, also working full time. So um, again, hopefully this is helpful for one of you guys. Hopefully you guys um, dive into here. I'm going to again, um, try to put this roadmap into like description. So if you want to actually learn deeper, you can. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Um, peace.